Hallelujah. You can be seated. I always get so excited when I come to South Africa. This is the nation of my birth. Um, I was born in Klerksdorp. Daar in West Transvaal, waar die tarantale met vels kunnen rondloop. And uh, I just love coming back here. I love to sit around the fires, smell the pup and the burovos and eat all the cook sisters. And I probably put on like six or seven Ks before I get back to America. The Americans are known for some foods, but not all foods. And all foods lead to South Africa. Amen. And come on, I, I want to just give yourselves a big hand clap this morning. You are a beautiful people. You are a, one of the most gracious nations in the world. And, you know, when I flew in here, I really felt such a shift in the spiritual realm. I really believe that you are going to see your nation win the day. There has been so many prophetic words spoken over your nation. This is the season to become encouraged, become, get, get a hold of some courage and become encouraged. Amen. Put the courage of God back in your heart. Start to prophesy over your nation. Start to speak life over your nation. Come on. Stay away from all the conspiracy theorists. Stay away from people that just keep on speaking darkness over your nation. Spend time with people that will speak life and light over this nation. Because this morning, I have an amazing word. Um, a few months ago, I was just having a walk, having a time with God. And, uh, and just as I was waiting on the Lord, the Lord spoke a word to me and He said, I am bringing nations, cities, and peoples into an era of, and He said this, Arise, shine, for my light has come. Arise, shine, for my light has come. When I watched some of the rugby that I could see yesterday, I want to tell you I was so encouraged, not because the box won, but because there was something on them that reminded me of the church. You guys are so full of light. You're so full of life. It's, it's, it's an amazing thing to get around people and just look around this congregation and come out of a worship session that we've just had with Jesus. And I want to tell you, I can see it on your life. I stand up here and I'm like, Lord, this place is filled with your glory. And so let's just pray and get straight in the Word today because I really truly believe that this is a prophetic message to the church today. If you will arise, if you will respond. You see, the whole Word is there's two words, if and if you believe. Jesus said to them, if you believe, if you arise, if, if, if. So that means you and I have, have a, a decision to make to step up and say, no, I'm leaving everything behind me and I'm stepping up into my spiritual inheritance that is mine. Amen. Come on. So Father, in the name of Jesus today, I thank you for these glorious supernatural people. God, these ones that you love, the apple of your eye, I thank you for the word today that will go into deep, deep ground, deep soil, and that you'll stir them into a place of action in Jesus' name. And everybody said, Amen. So if you've got your Bibles with you, uh, I'd like you to go to Isaiah chapter 60, Isaiah on page 817, if you can get it there. I'm reading out of the Amplified Bible, and I just love this because this is so prophetic in this season. In actual fact, he didn't just say to me, arise, shine. He said, arise, shine, and advance. Advance. How many of you want to see the advancement of the kingdom? I want to advance the kingdom. I want to bring the light to the kingdom. I want to, how many of you know that when you walked into this building at night, pitch dark night, and you switched the lights on, let me tell you, the light's not trying to chase out the darkness. <laughs> Let's chase the darkness into that corner. No light leaves. Why? Because uh, uh, Darkness leaves. Why? Because light has the authority. When you switch the lights on, darkness flees. Amen, F goes out of the building. There's not like a pocket of uh, darkness somewhere. And so let's just read this to you. It says in verse 1, chapter 60, Isaiah chapter 60, verse 1, it says, Arise from the depression and prostration in which circumstances have kept you. 
You've got to think that through and say, God, I'm not going to, I'm no longer going to prostrate myself under this thing of darkness. I'm going to rise from my depression. It says, rise to a new life. Rise to a new life. This is 2024. You ought to be so full of life. You ought to be so full of faith in 2024 that you become the most attractive commodity on the earth. Come on, you are a commodity. You are God's commodity on the earth. You are a priest and a king. You ought to have all the joy, all the peace, all the solutions. You should have all the courage, all the faith, and everything else that people need. You should be the most attractive being on earth. Say attractive. Look at your partner. Make sure it's your partner, your wife, your husband, not somebody else's wife. And say, you are the most attractive thing on the earth. You are attractive. You are beautiful. Some of you are just staring right in front of you. Near, kijk na jou vrouwkie of jou mannikie langs jou en sê vir hulle, hulle is jou beminde. Come on. I mean, I can still go die taal, you know. Some, I'm telling you, some of them just look. No, look around you. Have a look at the light, at the joy, at the peace, at the power, at the, at the faith that is sitting on the seats around you. You guys are full of life and full of joy. Can you imagine if we got that revelation and we walked out of the door today into this world that is so needy? What could happen? And it says, arise, shine, arise, shine, rise to a new life, shine, be radiant with the glory of the Lord for your light has come and the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. It is so beautiful. Verse two, for behold, darkness shall cover the earth and dense darkness all peoples, but the Lord, but the Lord shall rise upon you and his glory shall be seen on you. So you've got to start to make a decision and say, God, I want the glory of the Lord to be seen on me. I want God's glory to be seen on me. I want to be known as a glory one. Wherever I go, people should say, wow, there's something so delightful about your life. You are so delightful. You're so full of joy. It's such a pleasure to hang with you. Every time you come into our space, you bring this fragrance of God. Come on, and it's not your brute. Some of you guys that are still addicted on, come on. It's the fragrance of the Lord. It's the, it's the joy that you bring with you. It's like everywhere you go, you can't help but lay hands on people and bless them and be generous to them. And that's what the world needs to be seeing right now. Amen. Come on. And I want to tell you, there, there are many verses in the Bible, but this specific verse gets me so excited because the Lord says to us, but the Lord shall arise upon you and his glory shall be seen on you. You should embrace that verse as your verse for the year. And nation, nations shall come to your light and kings to the brightness of your rising. That is such an evangelistic verse right there. Nations shall come. Kings will come. You know what that actually means when you go and study that out? When it says, and kings shall come to your rising, it means wealth shall follow you. Come on, two of you got excited. Wealth shall follow you. Wealth shall hunt you down. People with wealth will come into your life and they'll say, we don't know how to spend 55 billion. Can we give that to the church? Can you help us make money? Can you help us do this? Suddenly God starts to bring wealth. The, right, the wealth of the unrighteous is laid up for the righteous. Amen, come on. King shall start to come. Like uh, Queen Sheba, when she came to, uh, to uh, the kingdom of Solomon, Sheba came there. She was overwhelmed. You know what overwhelmed her? The way they actually set the tables. <laughs> there was so much excellence in him setting the tables that that was the one thing that she was just absolutely amazed by. The way they just, everything was in excellence. 
And I want to tell you, I wonder what the world sees when they come into the church. Verse 4, lift up your eyes round about you and see. They all gather themselves together. They come to you. Your son shall come from afar and your daughter shall be carried and nursed in the arms. You know, he's speaking about a couple of things here. Because how many of you know when you go to John chapter 4, how many times beyond John chapter 4, how many times does Jesus say, lift up your eyes? What is he speaking about? He's speaking about the harvest. Lift up your eyes and see the harvest. Lift up your eyes and see the sons and daughters yet to be saved. It's an amazing prophetic word. Isaiah 61 to 5 is a prophetic word. God is casting vision. God is speaking. He's projecting vision into our hearts. And he's saying, hey, do you know what? Something happened 3,000 years ago. Jesus went to the cross. But in your life, as you receive Jesus, that light that he's speaking about is your salvation experience. Amen. Is this the chair I'm going to use? i asked ask somebody for a chair. Is that the chair? Okay. So I want to show you stuff in a second. But we've got to realize, nations shall come to your light. Kings to the brightness of your rising. Lift up your eyes around you. They shall gather themselves together. They come to you. Your son shall come from afar. Then in verse 5, listen to this. Then you shall see and be radiant. Then you shall see and be radiant, and your heart shall thrill and tremble with joy at the glorious deliverance and be enlarged because the abundance or the abundant wealth of the sea shall be turned to you. Unto you shall the nations come with their treasures. Do you know what it means in verse 5 when it says, and the, and the sea will give up their wealth, the abundant wealth of the sea shall be turned to you. And it's actually speaking about people. The wealth that God is speaking, listen to me, the real wealth that we want to see come back into the church is people. And I I believe with all of my heart, this is such a prophetic message that we've got to understand. You know, in chapter 1, it says something so powerful. Uh, What's this actually mean? It means this, arise, shine, take your place. Arise, shine, for your light has come. Take your place, shine, because your light has come. And uh, in, in, in John chapter 1, verse 9, let me just go there real quick. I want to read this to you because it's such a beautiful um, expression. It explains it so well in John chapter 1. If you've got your Bibles, John chapter 1. And let me just read a couple of verses to you because sometimes I think, you know, in the midst of war. How many of you know that some of us are in warfare right now? When I look around the world, there's warfare. There's all sorts of chaotic stuff happening, nations against nations, all the stuff that's going on in Israel. Wars are brewing. The Russians are wanting to have war. The Chinese want war. Uh, The guy in in North Korea wants war. There's all the shaking on the earth. Economies have been shaken. Um, Over the last couple of months, we've had multiple elections. Nations are being shaked. There's a shaking happen. Amen. But how many of you know that sometimes in that shaking, this is where the church needs to rise. We need to be the light of the world. Amen. This is where you become the light of the world. This is where you become the salt of the earth. This is where you put all the years of going to church into practice. Amen. All the years of being a a Christian, this is where you say, okay, I was made, I was born again for such a time as this. This is my hour to shine, not my hour to whine. Amen. Come on, because we have a lot of whiners around. I'm not speaking about wine, dope. I'm speaking about this is a time to shine. Amen. Come on. This is the time to shine, not whine, not murmur, not complain, not not hide behind a rock waiting for the rapture. This is the time for you to come out of hiding and bring the fragrance of God with you and be the light of the world and have the answer and be the solutionist. Be kind, be gentle, be merciful. Amen, come on. Be, be that, take that position that God has, He's poured into your life. He's invested into your life for such a time as this. For such a time as this, amen, come on. And John chapter one, it says, in the beginning, just say that with me, in the beginning. At least I can pronounce beginning. In the beginning 
was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God Himself, and He was present, and was present originally with God. All things were made and came into existence through Him, and without Him was not even one thing made that has come into being. In Him was life, and the life was the light of men. Jesus is the light of men. In Isaiah 60, arise, shine, for your light has come. Who's that? Jesus in you. He has become the light of the world. He lives in you. Arise, shine. But this is what we do as the church. This is what we do. We all take a good old religious sit placky. We've got our little religious seat and we sit there and everybody says, well, you know, this is happening on the earth and that's happening. What are you going to do? And this is what the church says. Well, we're just waiting on the Lord. Wach op die Heere. Ga net die wach op my stoelikie. I'm just waiting on the Lord, brother. Well, the Lord needs some workers. The Lord needs some missionaries. The Lord needs some prophets. The Lord needs some people. Well, I'm just waiting on the Lord. And some of you have been waiting for 40 years. You stuck to that chair. You can't move your butt. You stuck. What's happening, brother? Oh, I'm just waiting on the Lord. And what happens, what God is saying to us today, prophetically says, arise, shine, arise, shine. Your light has come. Amen. Come on. Christ has come on the inside of you. And when you arise into your purpose, into your assignment, Jesus becomes real to people around you. Jesus has to become so real, not just to you, but to the people around you, because He's come. Arise, shine, He has come. And when I read these scriptures about the fact that He is the light of men, and the light shines in the darkness, for the darkness has never overpowered it. Never overpowered. So when you come into that revelation and you take your position and you take your stature and you take your, this, this new position in Christ Jesus, let me tell you, darkness is going to start to flee. Darkness is going to start to move back. Darkness is going to start to dissipate because now we have a community of people, a corporate anointing, an anointing of people. One can put a thousand to flight, two can put two, 10,000 to flight. Now we have 120 people or 200 people all moving in the same direction. Guess what's going to happen to the darkness? Darkness is going to start to dissipate. Are you hearing me? And your language is going to start to change from a failure, survival language to a supernatural, victorious language because greater is He in you than he that is in the world. And now we're going to start to apply the word by faith and God, because He's he's arisen and He lives in me, my light has come. Guess what's going to happen? The darkness that you've been battling for 15, 20 years is going to dissipate. You're going to see that in your nation. You are going to see it in your nation. Take your place. Set your posture. I'm not speaking about another uh, period in time. I'm speaking about 2024 and beyond. You've got to arise. Listen, listen to this. When you arise in the glory God has put in your life, it attracts. (laughs) That's why some of you are attractive. And I'm not just speaking to the woman. Some of you people sitting here, I've been around you and I'm sitting with you and there's this beautiful attraction of God on your life. It shows up in your face, in your eyes. That When you open your mouth, it's like, whoa, I just want to hang with that person. And so suddenly the glory that comes on you is attractive. And God says more glory of the Lord will actually be seen on you and more glory of God and people can't keep away from you. And people, how many of you would love to live in that country? How many of you would just like to hang around the glory of God? Two of you, real quick. We've got to realize you're the glorious ones. You are so glorious. You're so full of God. You're so full of the anointing. And I want to tell you, I love it because let's go to Romans chapter 8. The glory of the Lord has come. I want you to write that down. When you get home, the glory of the Lord has come upon me. Stop begging God and start stepping up into your sonship anointing. You are sons and daughters of the King. You are not beggars. You are not orphans. You are sons and daughters. 
Amen, come on. You've got to step up into that mindset and say, you know what, I'm going to take my inheritance. Because listen to what Romans chapter 8 says. It says, for all who are led by the Spirit of God are sons of God. For all who are led by the Spirit of God are sons of God. For the Spirit which you have now received is not a spirit of slavery to put you once more in bondage to fear. Listen to me. If you spend time with people or you go to churches and you leave there in fear, I want to tell you that was not the presence of God. But if you leave a, the presence, a church, and you leave there, and you are excited, and you are determined, and there's more faith, and more joy, and you're more in love, you've been in the presence. Because every time we step into this place, this place is a well. I love this church because this is a well. Because every time I step out of this place, I'm more encouraged, I'm more enthusiastic, I'm more in love. Amen? Come on. Please help me, Jesus. Are you in love? You need to be in love with God. You need to be in love with Jesus. We just sang a song about maybe Minda. I just love those Afrikaans words. Amen. May Lifling. I just love that stuff. Hello. I'm, I remember a song. I sang it in the shower this morning. Act for long, no, yo. I just love that stuff. Amen. Sonia Adold. Remember Sonia Adold? Was that her song? Act for long now, yo. I'm, I'm, I love God. I want to be in His presence. Amen. Come on. I'm always thinking ways of how I can love Him. How I can bless Him. Amen. Come on. When last did you blow a kiss to Jesus? Ah, because this thing no, blow some kisses. I love you, Papa. I just love you so much. I'm the light of the world. You've come and lived on the inside of me. I have become the light of the world. And next thing, we have this evangelistic revolution going on on the earth. Because everybody sees you as somebody that knows how to love well. And you mercy well. And you trust God well. But you're not under a, a slave mentality because of some type of experience you had. Because this is what it says. For the spirit which you have now received is not the spirit of slavery to put you once more in bondage to fear. But you have received the spirit of adoption. The adoption, the spirit producing sonship in the bliss of which we cry, Abba, Father. There's something that's happened in my heart. The Spirit Himself testifies together with my own spirit, assuring me that I'm a child of God. I'm a child of the King. And if we are children, then we are His heirs also. Heirs of God, that should get your attention. And fellow heirs with Christ, sharing His inheritance with Him. Only we must share His suffering. And that's where the church stops. And now we think, now I have to walk around, suffer. I have to make myself suffer and I have to live in poverty. But we don't keep on reading because the Bible doesn't say that's it, period. It says now, it says, but what of that suffering? For I consider that the sufferings of this present time are not worth worth being compared with the glory, listen to this word now, with the glory that is about to be revealed to us, in us, for us, and conferred on us. God's glory has been conferred on you. It's in you. It's around you. Everywhere you go, the glory of God is like this force field that you carry. Amen. Come on. Do you understand what I'm saying? When you get around certain people, there's like a little bit of their leaven that jumps on you like this couple. They're just so full of life and joy and always wanting to please and bless. Amen. Come on. There, there's something about people's lives. And so when people get around you, it's like they should be experiencing the power and the presence of God. Amen. God. Why? Because the glory of the Lord has come on you. The glory of the Lord is on you. Amen. I'm, I don't get up in the morning and, and chase the Holy Spirit around the room. I'm filled with the Holy Spirit. Amen. Come on. I understand my sonship role. I'm positioned in God. I'm, I'm, I'm positioned. I'm, I'm not sitting on some religious chair somewhere waiting for the rapture, waiting for an angel to come and put a gold cross around my neck. No, I'm seeking to please God all the time because His light has come. I'm not waiting for Easter or Christmas or New Year or Thanksgiving or a little bit of a shake or a double. Do you know His light has come? He has come upon me. His glory has come upon me. 
and His glory has come upon every one of you, even if you're a scrumunkel. Funkel and call yonder. It's come on you. And so when we look at that, we've got to realize there's a law that God is operating in the spiritual realm. The same way favor attracts favor. Mercy attracts mercy. How many of you know that mercy attracts mercy? How many of you know that money attracts money? Money, just say that with me. Money attracts money. The Bible says when you sow, you will reap. It's a law. It's a spiritual law. Favor attracts favor. Mercy attracts mercy. Glory attracts glory. So anything in the kingdom that is stewarded well, that's the key word. When we steward well, it increases. So when I come into worship, I'm going to steward faith well. I'm going to steward my adoration well. Guess what I'm going to receive? Glory. I'm going to walk in God's glory. I'm going to, I'm compre- I have a comprehension that when I bring His glory into a space of lack, the space of lack becomes a supernatural place of productivity. His glory breaks barrenness. Amen. Come on. So your words should be, God, I thank you. I'm your glorious one. According to Romans 8, your glory has come on me, in me, and around me. I carry this amazing gentleness of God. And whoever comes in contact with me is going to experience Him. Amen. Come on. I want to tell you something. I had an encounter with Jesus in January, in December, that literally changed my life. And if I don't weep talking about this, then... Because every time I talk about it, I just feel emotional because I had the most amazing, it wasn't, a, it wasn't a dream. It wasn't like I had a dream and in my dream, no, I came back from Singapore on the 8th of December and I said to my wife, it was eight o'clock at night. I said, I'm going to bed. I'm late. It's, I'm tired. I went to bed and she, she, she didn't come to bed. She, she's a night owl. You know, I, I need to go and roost with the chickens. And so while I was in my bed, I had an out, I don't know if I was out of my body or in my body, but Jesus walked into my room, the most beautiful Jesus. And he took me by my hand and he said, I want to show you something. He took me out of my body. I wasn't in my body. He took me out of my body. I know it sounds weird to some of you, but he took me out of my body and he said, I want to show you the movement that I am going to bring upon the earth. And then he started to take me to all these different places where kids were being healed. I saw children healed. I saw little kids being healed. I saw healings. I saw the most amazing signs and wonders. People were getting healed. People were getting touched. And I went, I flew around the world with Jesus. And I woke up out of that state and I started screaming. Lord, that's exactly what I've been praying for. I've been praying to see signs, wonders, and miracles. And he said, you don't have to shout it out. It's going to be part of who you are. Because my glory is on you. Everything I am, everything that I've inherited from my Father has now become yours. And I woke up there like, man, I was on cloud nine, but I had an encounter. I saw something in the spiritual realm and I suddenly realized that the glory is real. The power is real. The anointing is real. The presence of God is real. The wine of God, the oil of God. It's like we don't understand God's presence. And and from that moment on, my life became completely different. I can't even explain to you what the, the metamorphosis that I actually experienced. I'm now more, I'm more aware of God's presence today than I've ever been in my life. I'm more aware of God's glory today than 35 years of ministry. I've seen something. And God wants you to start to get into those places. Because listen to me very carefully. Uh, listen to this, anything, whether it's an anointing to heal, to prophesy, to teach, whatever you're stewarding well increases. 
So if you continue to, in, to steward his glory and his presence in this house, Apostle Peter, no religious demon in hell will stop it. Just keep on stewarding his glory. Keep on stewarding the word. Keep on stewarding the prophetic. Keep on stewarding the healing anointing here. Keep on stewarding every form of ministry to the Lord and He will increase it to such an extent that this place will explode. It will become an epicenter of revival. Just keep on doing it. Come on, give God a hand. But the same law applies to the opposite. Listen, so if you treasure things that are wrong, it will also attract. For example, if you value gossip and you value disunity and you don't have a gate to guard your heart, it will attract gossip and division. You've got to start to say in this hour, 2024 is the year of the door. You've got to start to say, God, I'm going to put a gate around my heart. I'm putting a gate around my eyes, around my ears, every eye gate, ear gate, whatever gate I have, my emotional gate, my, 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 whatever. God, I'm going to put a gate around me and I'm not going to allow anything to come and mess around with your glory. People don't just fall. Gates are left open. Ear gates are open. Eye gates are open. Mouth gates are open. And the enemy is a legalist. And when he finds access, and it's not just he has to break in. No, the gates open. It's legal access. He will come in and he will plant his seed. And the next thing, your mouth, your eyes, instead of them seeing the glory and speaking on the glory, suddenly your language will take on the language of the enemy. So we have a, we have a, we have a, we have a great opportunity. What is attracting? What are you attracting through your gates? What are you attracting into your eye gate? If I don't have a standard of morality in, in areas of my life, in my jokes, in my speech, in my eyes, in my ears, guess what I'm going to start as steward? I'm going to start stewarding the ability that could get me into trouble with my marriage. What are you stewarding, sir? What are you allowing to occupy your mind? If it's immorality, if it's all sorts of stuff, if your jokes are dirty, your speech is dirty, you will attract immoral stuff. If you steward anger long enough, it will become your lifestyle. But if I steward the glory of God long enough, it will become my lifestyle. Anything you steward will become the standard of your life. If you're stewarding His glory, you're going to become the most attractive person on earth. So whatever your treasure is, you, whatever you attract, this is going to be your philosophy. It'll be your strength. It'll be, it'll be by what you're known by. What are you known by? And so church... I want you to say this with me. Arise, shine. Everybody say, arise, shine. For my light has come and the glory of the Lord is seen on me. That's how you ought to live your life. From this moment on, you set the pace, you set the rule, you set the standard, you become the excellent one, you become the Word of God, you become everything God wants to do in this city, in this region, in this nation. And I'm telling you, there will become such a vortex of God's glory and power on the earth that people will just get saved left, right and center. You won't have enough seating in the church. I want to just share something and then I'll bring this to an end. I want to just say this. It's all about the manifestation of Jesus on the earth. This is about the manifestation of Jesus. When you and I walk in this revelation, we manifest Jesus. When you take your place and you shine, it attracts His glory. And when you attract His glory, you and your household will advance His purpose on the earth. We all of us are in a position to advance His purpose. I want to tell you, how many of you have ever heard of Evan Roberts? In Wales, he had a little church way back in um, 19 Footsack, I think. Evan Roberts. 
1904. They had no electricity in this little village in Wales. Listen, I want you to listen to this. They had no electricity. And the people living around his church multiple times would look at his little church down there in the, on the, in the valley. And the church inside would glow with the glory of God. Whew. No electricity. But they would look at the building and it would go, whew. it was a glow. The glory of God. You see, we think it's just pie in the sky. We just think it's sky fi But it's not. It's in you. Amen. A friend of mine just recently, Pastor Rob Stuttle, who runs my ministry in Australia, they were in then Gosford in, in Sydney. Next thing, the fire brigade came, came into their church, running with hose pipes. There is a fire on the ceiling of the church. And the pastor said, it's impossible. There's, our smoke alarms have not gone off. We are having church. They said, no, there's a fire on the outside of your church. And when everybody ran out, this, these flames were coming out of the roof, but there was no fire. It wasn't consuming the building. I'm not speaking about 1904 or 1961. I'm speaking about 2000. Something happens. When you come into unity and you come into agreement and you all say, yes, God, we will arise. Your glory has come. Arise, shine. God, we embrace your glory. We want to become those that will administrate your glory on the earth. God says, okay, more. Whew. Amen. And all of you in this room are about to experience, you are going to ex about to experience Isaiah 60. You, some of you are coming out of drastic times of depression. Some of you are coming out of drastic times where things in your life have stopped. Everything stopped. The momentum stopped. I'm going to tell you that young guy there with the dark um, jacket on, you sitting next to a woman that killed a leopard. I want to tell you right now. I want to tell you right now, the momentum in your life has not stopped. God says, I will increase the momentum. If you will seek me, if you will seek me, that's the key. If you will seek me, if you'll run after me, if you won't just be uh, interested in uh, wanting to be a member, but you want to be a son of God, I'm telling you, God says, I will increase everything around your life, around your family, around your marriage, around your relationships. Everything in your life will increase because I'm a God of momentum. I'm not a God of barrenness. If you look after me, if you keep on knocking, you see, the, the thing is, you know, go and read Proverbs when it says in Proverbs, it says, oh, my lover was at the door. I could smell his fragrance. By the time I got to the door, he was gone. You see, God's been fiddling with the door of your heart. He's wanting to come in, but she was already, it says she already washed her feet. She didn't want to dirty her feet to walk to the door. She didn't want to do that. But by the time she did get there, he was gone. And all she was left with was the residue. I don't want to stop there. I don't want to have just the residue. Don't be happy with the residue. I'm not just happy with my wife's smell in the fragrance. Oh, no, Dee was here, but we don't have any. There's, she's gone. That's like me walking in, saying to her, hey, we're going to have a date tonight. And she says, yes, I want to have a date with you. And I mess around. And she puts her perfume on and she leaves. And I walk in there thinking she's there. But all I'm finding is her fragrance, the residue that her presence was there, but the person's not there. And some of you have been happy with the fragrance. But he's gone. And I'm going to tell you today, God is going to bring this nation to a place of supernatural empowerment. You're going to empower other nations. I'm telling you, there was a word spoken over South Africa by Mel Tari in 1988. I was in that meeting and he prophesied a word. And I sat there and I said, that's it. And he said, a time is coming where South Africa will be like a zebra, brown, black and white, running together as one animal. And people will come from all around the world to see this animal run. And in that season, great revival will break out over the nation because they would say it has been impossible for the white and black and brown to run together. That is going to happen in your nation when you arise in your glory. I want you to stand up, Sandra. 
I really felt today strong in the Lord as I was waiting on the Lord. The Lord says, you are going to become a catalyst. You are going to become a catalyst. In a very short time, you're going to start to bring white, black, and brown. You're going to cause a movement of unity. Yes, you, little old Sandra, is going to rise up. And God says, I'm going to give you insight and understanding. I'm going to come in your mouth. I'm going to start to use your mouth. And your mouth is going to start to become like a trumpet. And God says, this house will not just be a house of white people, but this house will be a house of South Africans. God says, I will bring them from the north, the south, the east, and the west. And God says, this house will start a movement of unity because it started with somebody. It was like the two old women high up in the Scottish Hebrides that sat there. One was an invalid and one was blind. And guess what? As they prayed and sought God and interceded, they actually started the Scottish revival. And God says, I'm going to cause people that are not seen right now, that are unseen, they are hidden. God says, they will cause revival to come in this nation because the only thing, the only objective that will, that will create healing in this nation is going to be heart revivals, not head revivals, not denominational revivals, not this revival. God says heart revivals. Deep repentance will come out of this nation. It will flow like a river to different corners of this nation and thousands of people will come repenting and crying out and, and cities and nations will be restored. And God says, Sandra, I've put that in your heart. I've made you a catalyst in this season. Don't be fearful. Don't be overwhelmed. Because sometimes you think, because you're an African woman, God, what can I do? God says, you can do more than you think with me. So you be blessed. So Father, we thank you. We praise you today. We give you glory. We thank you for your goodness. We thank you for your goodness. I just want to tell you, you're going to be like an arsonist in the hand of the king. You know what that means? You're going to start fires. You've been waiting on God. Lord, where do I fit? How do I fit? Where do I fit? Sometimes you felt like a, like a, a three-legged cat on a tin roof. Sometimes you said, God, I don't fit here. I don't fit there. I don't fit here, God. I just don't fit. I feel like I just, I'm a pole in the wrong hole. And God says, I'm going to plant you by the river. But everything you've carried, that intensity, that, that, intense, that, intensity, that intentionality, that fire, the, the, the glory, it's like sometimes it's just, it's on in your belly and then you just have to abort the fire, abort the fire. God says, no, in this season, you're not going to abort the fire. You're going to be raised up amongst the people that will understand your temperament. But I saw you carrying some matches and some benzene and everywhere you go, you are going to burn out the chaff. You're going to burn up and you're going to start the fires of revival in the hearts of people. You've been waiting for it, but you've been a little scared. God, how do I do this? How do I do this? And God says, you're going to sit amongst the woman. There's a woman movement. There's a Deborah movement about to start in South Africa. Yeah, and all the women they said, yoo But anyway, let's just, Father, we just thank you right now. We thank you, Lord. These things that have been burning in your heart, Haram, you and your wife, just burning in your heart. That's why you're so, I mean, you're just very intense, some of the things you do. The Lord says, because you've waited upon me, you and your wife, you've waited, you've waited upon me. God says, this delivery will be a complete delivery. It's, there's not going to be, this baby's not going to have to go into the hospital and the stuff that you're birthing is not going to have to wait before it's healed. You're going to be birthing stuff that's going to be so powerful and so complete in the season for the people around you. So Father, we thank you. We thank you, Jesus. We thank you, Lord. You're on the vet, you and, um, and Loki. I'm telling you, the wait's over. I see you walking in a room and the clock is about as big as that big, metal thing on the wall and I saw the clock ticking and ticking away and the, and the Lord was saying um, you've heard the ticking of the clock for so long that it's actually numbed your senses and it's like God when I've just seen this clock and God says I'm going to speed up the delivery I'm going to steer, 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 um, speed up and accelerate the outcome for you in 2024 uh, you're going to have an outcome you're going to start to see that as you've planted in the soil of faith 
I don't know if you've watched Faith Like Potatoes. You need to go and watch it today. That's your, that's your homework. Go and watch Faith Like Potatoes because that's the type of experiences that you're going to experience. When there's nothing on the field, you couldn't see it on the field, but underneath the soil was big old potatoes. And God says, I'm going to show you what I can do outside of the natural realm. Because many things that we do is all based on natural circumstances and natural results. But God's kingdom works on supernatural results and supernatural ways we don't even understand. So Father, we just thank you for this man and his wife in Jesus' name. And I'm sure many of you are sitting here waiting for a word, but I'm going to tell you something. As you step into this word, take this word and step into this word and say, God, I'm going to step into my inheritance as a glorious one. I'm going to rise, shine. I'm going to take, make, I'm going to take Isaiah 60 and I'm going to turn it into a prophetic word for my family, for my marriage, for my children, for everything that I own. God, your light has come on the inside of me. And God, I'm going to rise up today and I'm going to put Jesus back on in my voice, back on my lips, and I'm going to become that one that will shine your light everywhere I go in Jesus' name. And everybody said, Amen. Amen. God bless you. Thank you that you have been able to vir ons online diens. Ons hoop dat hierdie boodskap regtig iets vir jou beteken het en dat dit jou geëncourage het en jou feit gesteur het. Daar gaan nou 'n geleentheid wees om te saai in die werk wat die Here hier sal doen by VL gemeente. Die bankbesonderhede en die QR kode sal nou op die skerm verskyn. Ons hoop dat julle 'n wonderlike week verder sal hê en God segen.